So Ted, we're on our last question here. Um, and he's wondering, uh, what's the point? There's so much competition. He's a vegan and he feels that there's so many vegan accounts out there and he's just going to be one in a million. And he doesn't feel that his product would reach a lot of people. And what's, what would be the point? He just feels like it would be easier to go to his day job instead of trying to help others and grow his online business. Good question. I'm actually thinking about writing an entire book about this topic specifically. Every day I think about, so I used to do triathlon competitively. I used to race for like a good seven years, triathlons. I eat, sleep, and breathe triathlons. All I did, swim, bike, run, swim, bike, run, swim, bike, run. And I, every time I was in training, I'm thinking, okay, I'm trained to win, trained to win, trained to win. When I show up at a race, I'm trained to beat everyone in sight, right? It was very competitive. Growing up, I played soccer, very competitive. You play to win. And it just, after a while, that competition, like the competitive nature, the competitive mindset just kind of like faded away. And I didn't want to compete anymore. Instead, I wanted to create. And so I ended up quitting triathlon altogether. I'm like, I can't just keep trying to, I, I hate competition for two reasons. You want to know why? I yes, hate competition I because winning feels good, but beating other people doesn't. Mm -hmm. Right. And in order to win at a competition, there has to be losers. Right. If you don't, if you don't win, you, you lose. Right. You win, or you lose. And so winning is cool, but I always felt bad for beating people. But I felt even worse when I lost. So I hate losing. And you can't <laughs> lose when you create. Like, if, 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 I'm, if, I'm, if I'm at home and I'm filming a video and I upload it, I don't win or lose. I just, I just create. I provide value, right? So really, if you, if you look at it that way, there's no competition. It's just creation online. So it's a really, really cool aspect just there. But the other thing is, um, like I mentioned in another answer here, is like I'm like a unique snowflake just like you are, right? Every snowflake that falls down, every snowflake that falls down, for all the snowflakes you've ever seen in your entire life, they're all unique snowflakes. So incredible. It's incredible. And just like humans, you look at billions of humans, you put them all side by side, they're all different. How is that possible, right? So even people look similar, they're different. And so online, there's going to be certain channels that resonate with certain people, right? Certain people love Alyssa, same people, they don't like me. Other people love me, I can see why. But they don't, <laughs> but they don't like Alyssa, right? It's just, just different flavors for different people, different strokes for different folks. My favorite rapper, you probably don't like him. Lissa's favorite musician, I might not like him, but I like Lissa. So it's like there's this overlap, right? I like Lissa, but I might not like her favorite music. Or I like Lissa, but I might not like her favorite recipe, but I like Nate's favorite recipe, right? So there's so much overlap. And so there's going to be something out there for everyone, right? There's going to be something out there for everyone. And you just have to get over the fact that you think that there's too much competition and then go to the beach and go to Walmart and realize that there's no competition because nobody is putting out the content that you want to put out. And even if there is people putting out the content you want to put out, it wouldn't hurt to put out similar content in your own words, based on your own personal experience. Any thoughts on that, Lisa? Yeah, it's so true. It's kind of, um, Nate has a really good analogy where if you took a script like lyrics to a song, and you gave those lyrics the exact, it's, it's one message, right? You have one message in the lyrics. And you gave the lyrics to a rap artist. They're going to create their own song with those lyrics. A country singer is going to create their own song with those lyrics. Um, maybe an instrumental pianist is going to create the feeling of that song without the lyrics. But what the lyrics convey, you're going to get punk rock maybe a hair, an 80s hair band, you're going to get uh, a violinist, maybe an opera singer, you're going to get all these people creating their own voice. And your voice is so valuable and so important. So there is no competition, mm -hmm. because you are the only one of you. Yeah. So you're in competition with and, anyone. And, and, and just to reiterate that too, it's like my favorite rapper, he's got a song, it's called Psycho, part two. And there's this girl who covers it. She, she does like an acoustic cover. And I like her version better than his. Mm. She's just the same lyric, but just her style. And I'm like, ooh, maybe I can find some other covers that are really good, or even better than hers. So I'm like, nope, I can't find. Like, I just like hers the best. So there are thousands of people who've covered the song called Psycho Part 2, but I like hers the best. And it's so good that like, I, I listen to almost every day, but like, so many people have covered the exact same lyrics, the exact same chords, same melody, 
but it's her voice and her vibe, her energy that I'm attracted to most. I like that. And same goes for all the cover songs. There's a lot of cover songs I like better than the actual original. Mm -hmm. So, and, and there are people out there who like other covers better than the covers I like. So it's just, again, it's, you go to the grocery store and some people are going to freaking pick this pepper. <laughs> other people are going to pick the, the pepper I would pick. Right. So there's, there's exactly. There's, so there really is no competition. The only person that you're really in competition with is the you from yesterday. Yeah, right. Damn. I love that one. I know that's one of my, one of my favorite quotes. You aren't in competition with anybody. When I was a professional photographer, the thing is with competition, like you said, you always feel like kind of ugh when you're in competition with somebody else, because you're not them. You're not going to do it as good as them. Or if you do do it as good as them, maybe you don't market the same way they do and you wish this and you wish that. And you're like, Oh, you're having a bad day because you're scrolling through Instagram and you're seeing all your favorite people doing stuff that you're not doing. And you're like, Oh, why can't I do it like that or whatever? But when you release all of that, when I was a photographer, I would look at other photographers work and I would start to feel bad about myself because I wasn't as good as they were or whatever. But when I released that, when I stopped focusing on what everyone else was doing. And I started focusing on my creation and what I wanted to create and the vision that I had, my work just blossomed and I wasn't anxious. I wasn't, I wasn't in competition. It was so wonderful because that's when I found the most growth when I was just in competition with myself. How could I make that image better than the way I did it before? And, and, um, final piece here, final piece <laughs> is when someone says, that's a competitive market. That's a, it's a really saturated market. I'm like a saturated market. You know what that translates to? Mm. Saturated market is a proven market. Exactly. It, it, There's it, a reason it's saturated. Yeah, exactly. Cause it works. Mm -hmm. It's like, that'd be like going to the gym and saying, um, Oh, the gym is saturated with guys with big muscles and you want big muscles, right? Yeah. So you should go to the gym. Oh, but it's saturated. But, but, but the guys get big muscles by going to the gym, right? You're like, yeah. Well, you should go to the gym and get big muscles, right? Or it's just saturated. <laughs> go in there. You can pick up some of the weights. You can find your space. There's always going to be space in the gym. Mm -hmm. And you can lift the weights. If you can't find space in the gym, come back an hour later. Or, or tomorrow, come back tomorrow, but like at 6 a.m. You're going to find your time. You're going to find your space. You're going to get huge just like those guys in the gym if you do what they do, right? So saturated market is a proven market and here's where it gets really cool if you take if you find a saturated market let's say it's let's say we live in an alternative alternative universe and the saturated market the thing everyone's doing is knitting <laughs> knitting is like the thing what's that thing what's that behind you got a quilt back there oh yeah yeah my mama made it, <laughs> mama made it. totally fluke i didn't even like see that until after i said it. that was a really weird manifest right there but um <laughs> Knitting is like the thing. Now you come in there as, as, as just another knitter. Well, yeah, you can be just another knitter. But if you come in there and say, "Hey, I'm gonna help you. Um, I'm gonna help you relieve anxiety," and my method for relieving anxiety is through knitting. Well, all of a sudden, you stand out because you're the anxiety knitter, right? Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, now oh, you're the anxiety knitter. Oh, if you have your own little thing on it, right? Like medical medium is a great example. Everyone's talking about raw food, this and raw food, that medical medium is like celery, <laughs> kidneys. He became like the kidney guy. And then he came up with a well, thing about like thyroid. And he had like a freaking picture of an orange. He's like oranges and blueberries, the best for thyroid. He became known as like the thyroid guy, right? And there was a liver guy or like, what else is he known for? Liver, thyroid. Yeah. Uh, a total cleanse, I think, or total cleanse, yeah, whatever. But you, you pick like one thing, like you yeah. read a whole book about peppers and why they're so good for like your posture, right? Like, Ooh, peppers for posture. I'm going to listen to this guy. So point is find something that works really, really well, attach it with something else that people want, and then just help them get the thing they want with the thing that's proven to sell really, really well. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's, that's, that's, works really, really well. So awesome. Yeah. So if there is competition, don't need to worry about that. Just need to get out there and share your message and just be you create. Yeah. And if there wasn't competition as well, I'd be skeptical because I'm like, okay, well, it's not proven. And who do I model? 
We need models. Who, who do we follow in the steps of, right? If I want to get good at basketball, guess what I'm going to study? I'm going to study Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, LeBron James. Right? I need these guys in my life to study, mm -hmm. to see how they play the game. So look up to the people who are at the top of the, in your field who are doing what you want to do and just study them, replicate their moves, make, make, make their moves your own. And as Lisa was saying, even try to just cover their songs and you'll come out completely different. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's uniquely you.